So recording this for my own self-reference in case I forget how to do this again. And I'm also just trying to put more information out there for if someone maybe looks into doing UE4 and character uh, pipelines between the two. Uh, between UE4 and Houdini, excuse me. I've been moving into Houdini a lot lately, so I'm also still learning quite a lot as I go along, but uh, I might as well contribute and share the info that I've been finding. So let's go. So my idea with this is I'm going to want to take this guy, and what I was trying to do was see about, like, one of the things I was experimenting with was I have his character, the default mannequin that comes in, and it can be, like, let's say you want to even do this for, like, character, skeletal character uh, LODs or reduction of the character uh, geometry. It's that's the first part of this, and the other part of this is going to be like uh, exporting out a skeletal mesh without making a brand new skeleton, but actually reusing the skeleton that's already in there, so that way it's already pipelined into all the animations and stuff like that you have in there. I just threw a random animation, random animation pack I ended up having in my library in here for testing once we get this guy back over. Uh, so starting with just a third person template, uh, be whatever. Even be a character mesh you're choosing. Uh, I'm going to grab this component and I'm going to take a look at the mesh. So I'm going to find it in Content Browser. Whoa, I don't want to go into the engine stuff. I actually want to go into the content itself. Uh, so let me get back. I hit Control B. There we go. That'll be my safeguard there. And I want to go to the mesh itself. Nice. Okay, so we're in the mesh inside of our content, which we now know is here. I'm going to get this guy out of Unreal and I'm going to uh, get him into Houdini. So the asset actions with the skeletal mesh, I'm going to export it, take this in, uh, uh, take this out as an FBX, and I'm going to put it in a folder I just have on my desktop I made for this session just to have everything stored here. So I'm going to save out my FBX. I these will be on by default. I just turned these three off because for this I really didn't need these unless you actually need this stuff. You know, depends on whatever your project's doing. All right, so jumping, minimizing Unreal for now. We'll come back to that later. And jumping into Houdini, I am using the indie version of this so I can export out FBX files. I think with Apprentice, you can really only do geometry. So, and other versions, you can do everything else as well. So uh, be it that, I have the export file in our folder that I exported out. So I'm going to drag that FBX skeletal mesh and bring it into my scene. It's going should be loading up. There we go. And it's loaded up. So I'm going to hit spacebar F so I can frame them up. Because in Houdini, like, objects are very big from Unreal versus what's in Houdini. Uh, so as an example, I'm just going to zero this out. And as a standard box, it's way down there. Give you an idea, there's this foot in the background. So that kind of shows you the scale to Unreal and Houdini. Um, if you're wanting to really do it, I mean, 0 0.01, I found it's a good one. Uh, there's a set of videos. If you look in the description of this, I'm going to include the link to the guy that I've watched quite a bit. That's kind of, I've watched and I've learned some of the Houdini stuff from him. So a uh, good channel to check him out. So it'll be in the description. Um, so continue on. Now we have our character. We have all the bones. And it comes into a subnet node for us. Uh, so if I dive into this, this subnet, it's going to open up into a lot of information. Uh, really, it's not a lot. What it basically is, is these are just bones and nulls and a few other uh, things that were put together from the external program, which it was made. I'm guessing it was probably rigged up in Maya from the Epic guys. But a bunch of bone nodes. But the two, well, three main nodes you want I want to focus on are this... First one up here, the very top root uh, null node, and one that's way over here. I'm going to grab these two and bring them over so I can show you what both of these two are. But there's really only one that I want the most to pay attention to, which is the geometry node. These two are important. This one's an extra, and so is this one, which is our material node. So it was self-contained in here, so all the materials will follow it. Uh, reading one of the comments from that other guy's video, um, iterating on what some of what he did, but I'm not trying to bring in a brand new skeleton. I want to reuse this character. I want to reduce the polygons down and then I want to export them out and bring them into using the same skeleton that's already inside of the project. So I'm gonna hold down Y, I'm gonna cut those two. It's going to take our mesh and flip them down because there was the negative 90 that was being held here. 
not a problem. I'm just going to jump back up or hit U key. And from this one, I'm just going to rotate it to 90. Whoops, excuse me, negative 90, face upwards just for viewing convenience. Uh, so when these two, uh, this one we really don't want to mess with because that's our root and we never want to add any bones before a root if there's already been a skeleton established because that'll break all kinds of things and Unreal will get really angry with you. So just don't do that. Um, but the main node I want to mess with is the geometry node. So this is everything to deal with the character. If you go into here, you'll notice there is some information that comes with it. So you have a skeletal file, just like the shop node that was in there for the materials is embedded within this for a self-contained geometry file. Uh, some of the groups, so basically like character body, I believe, and it's not highlighting on here, but mainly this is character body and then, or chest logo, character body, assigning the materials to those groups, capturing the bones, so the bone weight going to the geometry, uh, keeping an override, so I believe this one here, like I'm also learning this too as I go, so just bear with me on that. Uh, override to keep that in place, and then the deform nodes, so that way all the geometry follows bones. That's kind of like the last little note that we need to worry about later. Um, so one of the things that we are going to look at is I'm going to set up this network here. I'm going to post this up on my website too, so mainly for myself and if you guys need to go back and reference it as well. Really what you want to do is any geometry editing you're going to do is going to be inserted between the override, which establishes everything before it, and then the deform node. So like once you've already bound the character, or reducing, probably reducing the character down, it's just basically eliminating points, but all the information stays on the additional points and gets transferred to these ones here. Um, I'll rewrite this real quick, kind of explain what I was doing as I went through it. But uh, let's go through that real fast. So first I'm gonna drop a fuse node down. Uh, basically, if you're from Maya, it's kind of like a weld tool, Max, I don't remember, it's been so long since I've been there, back in Max. Uh, first thing you'll notice is this character is about 23,000 points, 40,000 polys. And if I hit the fuse node, it's still about 40,000 polys, but now we dropped it to 20,000 points. So, uh, big adjustment there. Basically fused everything up because every triangle is kind of separated upon bringing him over. Uh, next, I'm going to drop down a for each connect. And what this will do is basically allow us to jump through every piece of geometry on the character here. So if I go through and do a single pass, not enough screen space, that'll show up through every single uh, little character model piece. Going through all the digits here, give me something big. There we go. So kind of like the body, torso, legs, all that stuff. And from this, I want to, as I go through every single piece, what do I want to do with every piece? Every piece I want to do a poly reduce on. And I'm going to be pretty aggressive with the poly reduction on this guy for every piece. Um, but I want to do is I want to use the original point positions to keep the silhouette. And the continue reducing within quality tolerance will help with that. And let's drop it down to about, uh, I don't know, like 3.5%. And now we're down to about like 1,368 primitives or polygons. You know, it's it's a really aggressive reduction, but at this point, it's like his fingers are triangles at this point. It's, it's a very simple, simplistic character. I have one more thing I want to do, which I want to get rid of this chest logo that's here. Uh, this is geometry from the original. Um, it's kind of hard to see from this wireframe. I should have just had shaded on so you could be easier to see. But there is a chest logo that's sitting right here. I kind of highlighted it there a second ago. We go to select mode here. Oh, I'm already in it. Um, but basically, what I want to do is I want to do a delete on it. And with that, I'm going to do this right before I jump down to the for each. It can do it right after if you like, in case you missed it. But I'm just going to select that chest logo area, and I know it's in here. It's just a little hard to spot, so I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do it after the reduction method because then I have a lot less triangles to figure out where it belongs. Turn that on viewing. Does poly reduce. And I want to select that geo. Okay, escape return. So I've always found it to be the safe thing to go back. All right, there's that floating triangle right there. Let me grab that. 
not waste any more time on this guy. Hit enter to confirm his deletion. And that's it. So let's do one more thing. Let's drop down a normal node. And let's smooth up this character so I don't get it flagged with a warning trying to bring him back into Unreal, which I probably will now that I spoke it. Probably just jinxed it myself. And I'm going to drop this back down to the mannequin to form. Oh, right. Um, so one other thing I missed here. Attribute transfer. Probably the most important node you're going to need out of this whole stack. Uh, because what you're doing is these are brand new nodes. Some of them might be during a poly reduction. You might have lost information, but you need to take the information here and be able to transfer it to these points. Uh, so because if you don't have that, and you go to try to animate or move this character, uh, at the tree view, I'm going to select his just one of his bone deformers. And notice that his geometry is all kind of broken. So let me jump back over to the mesh. Attribute transfer. I'll just do transfer. So many options. Plug that guy in. Don't worry on Houdini, I got you. And we have transferred our information over. Um, more advanced users, you'll know all where, the, where all this information is. It's obviously in the geometry spreadsheet. Uh, pretty much gets rid of it right after this because of delete capture attributes and all that. But within this, this is where all of our bone and skinning information lies. So now if I go into the OBJ, whoops, too far. Should have gone to the tree view. If I go to the cap again, uh, should just deform like normal. And this is the poly reduced character. Uh, so we'll clap it left or so. Yeah, looking good so far. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, I'll do another image I'll bring up for you guys so that we can screenshot this if we need to. This is the export settings I tend to use. Um, mostly these checkboxes and this one here are the ones you want to kind of do. I, the reason I snickered at that is because I've run into so many issues where checkbox is always the simple solution to things. Uh, so I'm going to run through, do the export process on this, but in case you need this reference, there you are. All right, so now that we have this guy reduced, I want to take the same character mesh. So let's say I've this is like a new LOD for a skeletal character. I want to export him out. So I'm going to stay in here. Doesn't really matter if I stay in there or not. I'm going to export out FPX. The file node, it's going to ask me where I want to save this. I'm going to make a new one, but I want to underscore this with reduced. Save that down. And the export. So I've been finding this cool little trick. You can either navigate to it here which I will do and there's also where people have been taking this and doing a uh, control grab control B control click and drag brings in the name so I don't need to create root for subnet because that'll try to insert more information to the character and Unreal will just get mad at you and not even bother to import this character and I need to force skin to form export which was basically the node down here that is like the final closeout for saying you confirmed your character, that's what you want. And that, I think, if we're good, should be all we really need. Uh, I'm not doing any animation for this, I'm just doing strictly exporting. So I'll export this character out, look back in my files, and now I have two. Get the old mannequin from before, and now I have the reduction one that we just did. Jump back over to Unreal. And let's try to import this guy. Uh, I'm going to try to drop him in here. Actually, let's drop him inside of the uh, <laughs> the deaths folder. It's just a bunch of animation, really. It's just the character, his mesh, and that skeletal mesh. I'm going to follow the source file directory that's listed there, and I'm going to try to find that character to him. But uh, better example, I'll just throw him mannequin folder here so we know where our new guy is. Let's do an import. Uh, it is a skeletal mesh. It is Yes, we need to include the mesh. Um, if we don't specify a skeleton, it's going to bring a brand new skeleton over, but we already have skeletons that we want to specify. I'm first going to specify it to be the one that comes with the third person template. I know which one it is because if I hover over this, it'll tell me the path by game mannequin character mesh, which is the template. If I hover over this one, then you can see the deaths folder is the other animation pack that, that lies within this. So I'm going to leave that to the mannequin. 
I believe that should be good. He may be facing down when we bring him over. Um, if you did scale your character up, always remember to, <laughs> to change your scaling size. I think by like 100 units if you try to reduce it down to 0 0.01 inside of a genie due to size. So I'll import. And no smoothing group. There's that normal node. I tried to avoid that, but it didn't work. Compiling shaders. And yeah, so he's face down right now. Uh, let's fix that real quick. So what I will do is I'll just delete this guy. Do a re-import again real fast. I know it's nice to be able to do that and it's quick. Unlike when you have hundreds of assets in the future, things to slow down. And import translation, rotation by, I think negative 90. There we go. So he's straight up and down this time. And I noticed one cool thing is it only came with one material node. So I are one materials. So that means I have only one material ID. So I'm not dealing with two material IDs. When you're really trying to like crunch things down for optimization, that's one of the things you got to worry about a lot of is that. Uh, so now we see our skeletons down to that, what we had redu reduced it down to instead of Houdini. Um, so let's take a look at how this guy might look uh, with an animation. So what I want to do is let's just find a random animation to put him on inside of our pack. Uh, so here's our animations. And uh, I don't know, let's see what this is. Okay, he's a death animation and he's... Okay, uh, <laughs> right, let's use that one as uh, detailed as that one might be. So I want to eventually see how that is a preview. Um, so let's jump back to our mannequin file. And in here, I can actually tell it to assign a skeleton. Excuse me, let's just right click on assign a skeleton. Skeleton, assign a skeleton. And here are my options of skeletons that are inside of my project. So there's the one that we currently have it on, but I want to assign it to this guy. It's the same bone structure, which you definitely have to keep an eye on for, because if you don't have the same ones, things will look wrong and off. So bring that over. Skeleton needs to be saved. Meh, I might as well just do it. And let's jump back to Anim's. Actually, excuse me, let's jump back to him. And we can see what kind of animations might be running. So there's the default. And I can change out the asset by choosing a different guy. Ah, preview mesh. So now our second one's here. There's our poly reduced one. So it's running as it normally would. So, all right. Well, hopefully that helps anybody with whatever questions they may have been doing between those that process or that pipeline. So that's kind of how I found some stuff. So hopefully it helped.